All right, welcome back to another episode, episode five, I think, of uh, the Versatility Podcast, and I'm your host, Jew Els, and this is my good friend. You like to introduce yourself? What to do, y'all? What do y'all? It's Kimmy P. Y'all know what it be. All right, <laughs> all right. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just let that slide. But uh, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. You know. You know, man, I'm just I'm just your average 20 year old. I'm um, I work at a freighter hospital right now. You know, it's a little crazy with COVID, but we manage college student finance major, uh, big anime fan, big anime fan, you know, but we rep the dubs over here. We definitely rep the dubs over here. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm just I'm just out here living life, man. I'm just out here trying to have fun, trying to maneuver through COVID like everybody else. Facts, bro. I think we all just trying to maneuver at this point. It's like, it's like, we're just like, okay, you know, I know COVID's going on and stuff, but it's like, you know, I just can't, I, I'm gonna just survive for now. <laughs> it's just so normal with COVID still going on. You know what I mean? Hold up, your mic broke up right there a little bit when you said that. I was like, I was like, how can we still make it a little bit normal with, you know, with COVID still going on? How can I still make it a little bit like normal, like how it used to be? Hmm. Uh, I don't even think that's, I mean, I go, like, I've, I've been out to eat with a few friends a few times. That, that was like my kind of like glimpses of normalcy. That was like really it though, because, you know, we were, but we sat at the table at Denny's for like, I want to say like two hours, bro. Like just talking and stuff, bro. Like that was like the most sense of normalcy I had. I did that about three weeks, three, four weeks, three weeks ago, I think. And that was like the best feeling I've had in a while. You know, I just felt like I was relaxed. You know, I was with people. Of course, they could potentially have COVID, but you know, I just have to trust that they, you know, took care of their business enough and then, you know, take my shower and whatnot when I get home, you know, just and just move on from there. That's the best sense of normalcy I've had. I mean, what about for you, though? Um, well, life hasn't changed that much for me. I've been fortunate enough to have been still been working this whole time. Uh, I've been employed pretty much all through COVID. Um, I really, I've, I've like hung out with my friends a few times, a social distance stuff at their house. And I just feel like being around people and being able to just like try to indulge in activities you usually do but at the safe distance with the precautions that's the best feeling of normalcy for me because like it still gives you the feeling that things are okay but you're still taking those precautions to be safe at the end of the day so those kind of moments just those those little times you spend with the people you uh care about are the are the things that like kind of get go there for me thanks i actually I, i was i was thinking about this like a lot recently like i was like when we go back to normal how how is it gonna be like i i just if it, it feels weird being next to people now like for me to envision that like it just that that seems like totally like just far away now because i when i even when i think of hugging somebody i'm like eh. <laughs> i'm like I'm like, I don't, I don't really want to, I was like, I don't even know, like, how does that even feel, like, me dapping up people all day, I go to HBCU, you know, I go to HBCU, so all the, throughout the day, I'm dapping people up, like, what's good, like, you know, doing shakes, you know, snaps, whatever, whatever, bro, and, like, I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, bro, I don't, would I even feel comfortable doing that anymore after this, you know? Yeah, I, I definitely get that, it's, I don't know what the new normal. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what the new normal is gonna be once, right. once, co- once like we get the vaccinations and we just kind of like kill this. Like, I think COVID is gonna be part of our new lives. Like, it's not gonna be like when back in the back in the day with like polio and all that, where like the vaccine just killed it. We done with it. I think it's gonna be part of our new lives, but it's gonna be like the flu. It's gonna, it's gonna like be regulated and can try to be controlled. But I'm gonna be honest, like. I think going back, it's going to take a while at least because like people are still going to be precautious with crowds with to do this. this. You're going to have your your people who still don't they want to wear a mask. No, they're going to do their normal thing. But the people who really um, were taking those precautions, really frightened of COVID, they're just not going to go back to normal, especially not right away. I mean, I, I, I yeah, I can I can feel that. But I mean, we haven't dealt with anything like this in modern history i mean with flu 
you know, we didn't close everything down. Everybody was just, they just like ramped up on, from what I remember, because I was young, we we were younger when flu first came out, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I do remember like they had like a, all the wash your hands stuff everywhere now, because, you know, you know, those people who go to the bathroom, they just use the bathroom, they don't wash their hands afterwards. I still be peeping at, like, <laughs> dude, I, I swear I be peeping at, and I just look at you like, like, yeah, yeah, I, I can't see it because it's audio, but I give them like the stank eye. Like, bro, like you really just didn't wash your hands. Like, it's not even the fact that you touched your private. It's the fact that you went in a bathroom and just didn't wash your hands, bro. Like, that's what I'm mad about. Like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, bro. That's like, nasty. Yeah, it's, it's beyond nasty, bro. So I understand. I, so like I said, I do understand where you're coming from with that. It's just. Oh, man, I just how how do you? Uh, uh, it's just a lot to think about when you think about that, cause mm-hmm. it, it, I don't, it's hard to even explain anymore. It, it's 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 just weird. But yeah, hopefully we get into something new, especially with the new presidency coming into and all that stuff. I I feel like that'll help a lot, cause at least we'll be on a united front with the healthcare people and. The people that are quote unquote in power, I mean, won't be in. Yeah, power. definitely. That uh, yeah, definitely get to listening to the CDC more, express these guidelines, try to get people to stay home as much as like, and unless it's like a necessary thing, it's like you got to go to the grocery store, go get to work, go get your kids from like, because some schools are in person. Like, if you got to do those things, I get that, but like, try to minimize the unnecessary, like just leaving home just for the fuck of it type stuff you know what i mean yeah definitely man it's 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 gonna be a step-by-step process but uh i i did want to like talk to you about um i see you got the you got the packer hat on for those who are just listening but we're big packer fans all right let's just just let it like that (laughs) a little bit of understatement i would say i i think uh i don't i wouldn't say super fan for me i i say big big fan (laughs) you know for you as a super fan uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> He's about to put on the cheese head. Oh, oh. What boy got the cheese head on? Hey, man. Listen, if, you, if you're a Green Bay Packer fan, this, this, what, what we're seeing this year, this 13-3 and three is vastly different from 13-3 and three last year that we had. We... We are so excited, man. We we are so excited as Packer fans just just to be in the playoffs. First seed, we the, the NFC runs through Lambeau Green Field. Day. <laughs> Lambeau Field, man. And I just I this this is our best chance to make it to the Super Bowl. It definitely is. Um it's yeah. probably the best chance since 2014 that uh you remember that bad game against Seattle? Don't, 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 <laughs> don't, 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 bro. Don't even bring it up. I don't even want to. Oh, but no, uh, this is this is definitely Aaron Rodgers is playing at next another level. Devontae, um, I think he had 18 touchdowns, 115 receptions, and like 1,300 yards, and missed two games, two and a half games he missed. Um, the defense. As of late, like Darnell Savage and the Smith brothers have been coming alive. Jair's been doing this thing all year. They all like it's starting to click at all at the right time. So that's really exciting about it. And then Aaron is just we balling. We that's all I can say is we balling, balling. boy. 20, balling. 20 in the P boy. Just talking about me. It's just it, it just feels like it's all aligning, like the stars are aligning. It's like I can see clearly now. <laughs> like I just, damn, bro. Oh, your mic went out again, bro. I said, you got to get off of that when you fire, because, like, you fire from the podcast, you fire from everything. Like, you fire, facts, just because you said that. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm just, I'm just excited, man. I, I just feel really good. And then if, if, if my bucks can get it together, then I, I could die a happy man. I really could. Um, you know, tw- uh, I'm almost 20 years old, you know, but you know, I just, mm-hmm. I, I just feel like with all that combined, I would just, I, I could die peacefully and be okay with that. 
I don't know about that one. <laughs> I can't I can't go that far with you. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> oh man. I dude. can't go that far with you. It's a struggle, but like this is really helpful for the city, for the city of Milwaukee and just the state of Wisconsin. I don't know if people realize how much sports play a play a factor into the economic and like culture of here. Because without that, we're just literally cheese, you know, and stuff to, to the outside world at least. They exactly. Uh like I was uh I was scrolling YouTube the other day and I saw like Packer, like cause like you've been have you been to Lambeau Field? Uh yeah, I've been in there, not an actual well, I went to the family day game, but yeah, I've been in there. Like, you know, the houses surrounding Lambeau and all that. Mm. So per year, usually each house makes about eight thousand dollars from parking for games. So think about it. That's a that's a huge economic hit for each for each house. Just trying to make ends meet with that money. That is is that crazy. that's Christmas money. That's uh, money to get to the kids, all that. So it's. There's Lambo and the Green Bay Packers, along with the Bucks, along with the Brewers. They they all bring their own thing to Wisconsin, and it's definitely something that we don't want to miss out on. And we definitely miss fans being there, if anything. Thanks. Hey, uh, forget COVID. <laughs> I want to say the other word, but I ain't, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna I ain't gonna do too much. But <laughs> it yes. COVID really just hit. It it hit um economic and economically right now everybody's surviving it's not it's not thriving we're surviving and those are two vastly different concepts right there because surviving means that we're doing barely all we can to just make ends meet or to not even make ends meet but like be right next to where ends meet are and be able to survive off of that thriving means that we're good or you know, we might be like struggling a little but we're good in terms of money or like maybe on a mental aspect. So I feel like uh, Wisconsin sports are surviving right now. And when sport and when sports sports really come back, cause sports ain't really sports until the fans are there. That's, exactly. that's the whole experience. Once all that comes back, exactly. it's going to be better. They actually, I think they said they're actually going to have uh, fans in, at Lambeau field. Uh, yeah. About like 6,000. Uh, six, what I read it was. Six thousand sounds like a dream. It sounds like a dream, bro. But think about it. Lambo holds eighty. I know that's not even one tenth. No, that is one tenth. Is it? No, No, eight thousand would be a tenth. Eight thousand be a tenth. Oh, my math is terrible. But only that's that's less than one tenth of what Lambo Field holds. And I mean, I feel like those fans are gonna be like rowdy excited and just everything but it's like man that is crazy it's like i mean it's home for the advantage still because it's cold and stuff but still it's it's that's not the same it really is not the same and then they're going to be social distanced it, it's a lot mm-hmm. that's that's vastly different uh what i what i noticed because i went to the i went to the monday night game against the lions last year mm-hmm. um the atmosphere in Lambo, even on just like a Monday night game, is far different than anything you'll ever experience. So to think that that's a huge like advantage taken away from the Packers. Yeah, it's cold. Yeah, they're California boys, so they're they're living in sunlight. But that crowd just does a, a whole other thing to you. Like being from it going extremely loud, like a hundred decimals, to like being completely silent when Aaron's on the field it's a different vibe and it's it's a different atmosphere for anybody oh, so you're telling me when aaron's on the field they just quiet quiet it's before the play starts yeah before the play starts quiet wow because they want they want everybody to be able to hear cadences calls any like changes adjustments he makes the crowd the crowd like make sure everybody's quiet and even though they have opposing play, like opposing like fans, because mm-hmm. fans are gonna travel, Lambo's so like unevenly portioned from like Packers fans to like mm-hmm. any other team. So whenever they, uh, whenever someone's there, it's like it's barely crickets. Like that's what you hear on the f- field. That's crazy because I, 
I, I will admit this too. Whenever we go to the away games, I feel like some of our, our away games be home games because we Packers fans travel great, <laughs> extremely well, extremely, <laughs> extremely well, extremely well. I remember we was at a not at a Seahawks game, but like it was like a Seahawks game or something like that once, or I don't remember. I, either way, it was some game when I was younger, probably like 10, 11, 12. and. I heard us score a touchdown and it was louder than when the other team has had scored a touchdown. And I'm like, is this real? I was like, I'm seeing all, I'm seeing a whole bunch of cheeses. Cause that's how you know we're there. Cause you see the cheese heads. I'm seeing hella cheese heads in the, in the feet, in the stands and stuff, just screaming and yelling. I'm like, dang, this is a home game. <laughs> like, that is insane. Jeez. It's insane to even think about. Oh man, I'm just blessed to be part of this fan base. Honestly, but yeah, every time I like, every time I'll turn on the TV, uh, I'll see a whole bunch of them, and every time they say the Packers fans travel just as well as anybody, I was like, they do. Like, they'll they'll catch that flight, they'll drive down, and it means they get to see their Packers. They'll watch it. I I can't relate. Um, I I'm a I'm a bigger uh, Bucks fan than uh than uh than Packers fans, but like if. No, no. Even if it was like just one game a week, I like if, if it had to make two for the Bucks, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't do that. Like that, unless I'm a part of the team somehow, like a ball boy or something. But no, like that's <laughs> a ball boy. Yeah, bro. Uh, <laughs> like I, I, I can't even see myself doing that, bro. Like that's a waste of my gas and all that stuff, bro. I'm, it depends on the place for me. Like if they're in, if they're playing at Minnesota, I'll, I'll drive to Minneapolis. It's not that bad. Or like Chicago, or even like I wouldn't go to Detroit because Detroit is ugly. But um, but like Chicago, like Minneapolis, like I I I take that little drive. It's not that bad. But like no, but I see people like when they're in Florida, California, um, Seattle, Arizona. Even I've seen like thousands upon thousands of Packer fans just flood those stadiums. And it's definitely a great feeling to see that your team is supported, like no matter where they go. Right. Actually, my uh, I have I have uncles, uncles and aunts, aunt uh, in uh, Texas, and they have a Packer pub there, like mm-hmm. just there in Dallas, in Dallas, Texas. Just mm-hmm. that, and my, this is Dallas, so and you know how how deep Cowboys fans ride for each other, and there's a Packers pub there. Like, yeah, because Aaron Rodgers has real estate at uh, what's his face at Jerry World, undefeated at Jerry World. Don't forget that he is. Eric, he's undefeated at Jerry World. Shoot, <laughs> like eight, I think he's like eight and zero. Oh. He's like either seven or eight and zero, oh. and like he's undefeated at Jerry World, like in his career. Do we even play there this this upcoming year? I don't even think we do. We haven't. I think we might play there this year, like the the season after this season. I Didn't think we, we might play there, or they might come to Lambo. Didn't we play them? No, this year? we played them this year. That was mm-hmm. last year. Mm-hmm. We beat them. I do remember that. Yeah, it definitely. It was a. Uh, Aaron Jones went for four touchdowns. I remember that. Oh jeez! All right, Aaron Jones, you better somebody better pay that man. He his contract expired this year. They saying he might not even be in the league with us. Be be on our team this year, bro. Uh, the thing I say about that, Aaron Jones is definitely the best running back on our team but i think jamal adams mixed with lj dylan is actually not that bad of a duo they're not they're gonna give the production that aaron gave but i don't think that i I do like aj dylan more than jamal williams together i think they jamal had like five six hundred yards this year and then and you split that with aj he can probably get like five, six hundred yards. You can equal Aaron Jones's production. Not exactly though, because even if two people could equal it, like if one person goes out, then you know that's half of that. Then who's the backup after that? It's just like little stuff like that. I mean, Tyler Irvin, right? Is and that his name? Yeah, Tyler Irvin. But what you got to remember about Tyler is Tyler also gets thrown out at wide out, and True. also does kick returns and punt returns. True. So he's gonna get his touches. Uh, either way, so I don't think he's not the biggest from what I've seen, like interviews with him, like post games. And he was like, he talks about like not really needing like actual like carries that much. As long as he can get touches, he's fine. 
he he feels like he can make an impact in multiple ways. So we we might as well just use our two pure running backs. Facts. Facts. I'm I, I still would rather keep Aaron Jones. I I meet from a personal standpoint. I know money wise, I don't I don't know what that looks like. It seems like he loves being a Packer. Um so I mean, he got pack. You saw he got a Packer chain and everything too, bro. Like, man, out of the Bears games, like, ooh, yeah, bro. You got you got to flex on the Bears. Uh, shout out the Bears. No, forget it. I never shot the Bears. Mm, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> they, they Mitch anything. Trubisky. Yes, shout out the shout Bears. Out, shout, out Mitch. Mitch. <laughs> shout out, shout Mitch. Shout out Mitch. Hey, for, for being Mitch. Mitch. Thank you. Goat, goat, Mitch. Greatest. <laughs> Jay Cutler 2.0. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I think he's better than Jay. Is he? No. No, 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 he's not. Jay would Jay at the best he was was cold. Like you gotta remember, Jay Cutler led them to an NFC Championship game. Dude, it, my memory is kind of fuzzy for like ever. I would say f- before 2015, 16, my memory's kind of fuzzy. Scott Tolzien, when Scott Tolzien had that amazing uh, little spin, spin for a touchdown. Like that's like the last one of the last first things I actually remember. Remember when I actually started was watching watching football. That that's 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 what I remember. So from like so the early so like the transition from like Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers, uh, it wasn't like the prettiest at first because like Aaron was showing flashes, you know, because Aaron mm-hmm. would have been sitting for three years. He was showing flashes of greatness, like he could get up. But then this was the prime opportunity. This was this was like when the NFC North was like at probably its strongest, because you had AP in uh, in Minnesota. Beast. You had that Brian Erlacher in uh, defense in Chicago. Yeah, I remember. You had Megatron and oh. Matt Stafford in Detroit. Detroit, and then you had you still had Greg Jennings, Jordy Nelson. Clay Math, no Clay Matthews came after, but like uh, those kind of people in Green Bay. So this is when this was the prime time for one of them to actually take over since Brett Favre had gone and Rodgers was still learning. So Jay Cutler had like a uh, a couple good, like a couple really good years in uh, in uh, in Chicago. But the reason Packers fans love Jay Cutler so much, uh, pick after pick, like it <laughs> it wasn't that like Jay Cutler was like like overly horrible like overall but like when he came to the Packers he was bad (laughs) it was just bad like and like it brought me so much excitement when they kept resigning him kept giving him more money same thing with Mitchell Trubisky Mitchell Trubisky makes me so happy I love him (laughs) brings tears tears of joy (laughs) amazing every time he throw a little uh, or whatever about him I'll just be it's like it's this this is what I tell people. I'm like, I'm like, listen, Bears can do whatever they want to do, but I know as soon as they go against us, it ain't gonna mean nothing. <laughs> it ain't gonna mean nothing, bro. And that's 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 what I'm like. Y'all could be five and zero. Oh. Y'all, it might be a good game, but I know we're gonna win. I, I, I'm like, I'm not. That's not even me being cocky. I just y'all always just seem to choke mm-hmm. against us, and we always play our best against y'all. Cause that's the that's the big rivalry. Like uh, as of late, cause think about it. It goes, the rivalry goes Bears, Vikings, and then Detroit. But then the thing about the Bears, the Bears, it's more personal than anything between like the two teams, more per, per se. Mm-hmm. But then the Vikings, it's more like Aaron got a grudge because, you know, they broke his collarbone back in the day. A couple years ago, they broke his collarbone. And so Aaron just been lighting them up. <laughs> Aaron just been lighting them up. I don't. I, uh, he he did go. I mean, last time we lost to the Vikings because of Dalvin Cook went insane. But yeah, that was nobody. Scary. Really, I, I mean, scared. they didn't make the playoffs. So I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care, man. But uh, I'm just. But how do you feel about us going against the Rams? Um, I feel like that's gonna be a good matchup in terms of. Their defense is good. I mean, I, our defense on their off offense, if they can't run the ball, I it's wraps. Like I just, I, I just feel like it's wraps, bro. And then with us, I don't. You you can hold Devontae, and I guess you could put your other CBs on them because you're gonna have Ramsey on Devontae. But Devontae's much different from other uh, wide receivers. 
Yeah, I was watching Undisputed. Shout out Uncle Shay Shay. Um, <laughs> but no, Jalen Ramsey, and I've watched Jalen Ramsey since he was in Jacksonville. I, I watched him in college at Florida State. Um, he's he's strong. He's a strong corner. He's fast enough to like run with you, but he's also like people like DK that don't phase him. Like mm. he'll go, he'll go push for push with someone like DK. He'll go stride for stride with someone like D hop. But what's Devonte has that Devonte is not like physically imposing. Like he's not, the, not that big all. of a wide receiver. He's not, he's not uh, get off of me. But if you watch, he's more Chad Johnson than Ocho Cinco. Because you remember Ojo Cinco was just big, athletic freak, mm-hmm. just doing everything. But Chad Johnson had better routes and better hands. So I think Devontae holds that advantage just because he has probably the best feet in football. He um he knows how to get open. He knows how to switch like from like slot receiver, wide out. And that's really gonna benefit us because Jalen Ramsey doesn't like to go in the slot. It's just not for him. But uh, I think it's a good matchup for us. It tests our offense. And I feel like if we can do it against them, we can definitely do it against either the Saints or Tampa Bay if they come out. But uh, the, main, the main thing I'm worried about is if Aaron Donald plays and plays well. That's, because, you know, he got, he got some fractured ribs. Yeah. Yeah, that would be um, bad <laughs> to, say the, to say the least. Like that, that would be bad. But I feel like our we just signed the Colts left tackle, which is crazy mm-hmm. to even think about that we can do that. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, your mic went over. He was a practice squad player coming up. All right, my fault. But no, he was a practice squad player coming up. So like the fact that he was a practice squad player that had to start because of injuries and COVID, that's the only reason we were able to sign him to like in the postseason. But um, no, it was like. But the the benefit we have is Aaron Donald is interior versus like uh, like a regular D end. He's interior, so we can really block him with Corey Lindsley because they're gonna they're gonna run a four. Uh, we can block him with Corey Lindsley and Elton Jenkins instead of leaving him one on one with like Billy Turner or like uh, Rick Wagner. Uh, so. But that gives us a good advantage over that because if I guarantee you him opening up because I've had I've had fracture ribs opening up just getting those quick motions getting your hands up like that it hurts it really does so yeah. that's definitely going to limit him unless they pull uh <laughs> let's I ain't gonna wish on nobody but it'd be really bad if they pulled uh a Tyrod Taylor on him you know what happened to Tyrod Taylor? Oh, they pun- punctured his. So they basically punctured his, his heart with a needle. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to wish that on him, but that'd be that'd be tough if it happened. I mean, that's why Justin Herbert got to but, end up uh, we seeing Justin Herbert. That's that's really the only reason, the main reason. I don't say the only, but it's the main reason. A baller. Justin Herbert deserved to start. Um, they probably would have won more. They probably would have been in the playoffs with Tyrod because Tyrod can probably close out games better than Justin. But Justin was definitely the better quarterback. I can see that. It's kind of like the Tua and uh, Fitzpatrick kind of duo. But, of course, Herbert's better than Tua, I would definitely say. Right now. Right now. If you – see, I watch I, I watch a certain amount of football and a certain amount of film uh, just because that's what I like to do. Um, Tua, bit so you gotta think two of Tua's wide receivers from last year were drafted in the first round, mm. and two of his receivers that he had, the other two receivers he had, are gonna go in the first round this year in this upcoming draft. Tua benefited from a scheme more than he benefited from his passing ability. I see that. Now, I'm not going to say he's a bad QB because he's not. He's not bad. He can make throws. He's young. But Tua's going to have to learn how to make quarterback completions versus scheme completions. So, like, stuff that's, like, he's open Mm. because he's open or you threw him open. Mm. Okay. I see what you're you're talking about. The very mm. big difference. I Yeah. It's kind of, like, the difference between, like, 
a slant versus like a a fly kind of was would it be that kind of difference? So yeah, so like like in college, offenses are very like simplistic compared to like the, compared NFL. to NFL offenses. Most of the time, you're looking at two reads and then you're checking down. So usually, so say, so his two guys, one's gonna run a fly. It's going to be either that deep route. Maybe you can beat the safe. You really just got to look at the safety to see what coverage they're in. And if he's not there, throw that slant, throw that post, get the easy one. If they're not, dump off to the running back or dump off to your three. In the NFL, it's going to be – it's like you got to make all four reads and then look for the check down if there is any, if there's even one. That's, that's what I'm saying. So he has – and also he benefited from having – if you have the best athletes, they're going to be, they're going to be open. Of if course. you're in college – is you have the best athletes, they're going to be open. But once you get to the NFL, they're all the best athletes. So what's open in college isn't open in the NFL. So you're getting half a yard, that's open. But then college, you might be two, three yards open on somebody, and that's an easy throw to make. But in NFL, sometimes you got to just got to sling it. You got to thread the needle. If you're young and you get picked. Yeah, you're young, you get picked off, you learn from it, learn some anticipation a little better. <laughs> And you just gotta, you just gotta go with it sometimes. And I think that's what he struggles with. Yeah, because they be baiting a lot in the NFL. Like I, I, I was, I'm getting better at, uh, because I didn't play football and stuff. But like the more I, I like play Madden and like actually watch the games, like I, I just, I see different things. And I'm just like, I'm like, oh, he really just baited him. Like I literally saw that whole thing. Like I saw him literally have like just just enough space in between him and a receiver so he can like pounce and then make the quarterback think that he's open and then he intercepts it or gets a bat down or something like that. I've, I've seen m- much more of that. And I'm like, dang, I'm like, these people are like, I'm like, dang, this, this is why they're the best of the best and, you know, all that type of stuff. So since you brought that up, uh, there was a guy named Ed Reed. You, you might have heard the name before. Probably one of the top five safeties ever. Um, he used to, he used to be in the wrong coverage on purpose playing Peyton Manning because he knew Peyton Manning used to like watch him all the time to figure out what the coverage was. So he used to be in wrong coverage on purpose. He would let Manning throw the ball and he would pick off. I think he had like seven picks against Manning in like two years, just doing that, just playing the wrong coverage two on purpose. Years? Dang. Because you gotta remember Manning, Manning is looking at him. He's not looking at Ray Lewis. He's not looking at the the corners. He's looking at Ed Reed to figure out what that defense is. And if you play the wrong coverage on purpose, knowing the quarterback's looking at you and you're fast enough and ability, your ability is like good enough to make that distance up, that's easy, that's easy money. That's barbecue chicken. <laughs> barbecue chicken alert. <laughs> All right, that's no, that's dope. I didn't even I didn't even think about that. These people are really the best of the sport. And the more I like especially when it comes just basketball and all that stuff in general, like the more respect I have for that stuff, like, you know, think, think about like, like us, you know, we see like a, when we were in high school, all these great athletes and stuff like that. And we like, damn, we could barely keep up with them. So how do you, so what do you think in college and in the NFL is like, if there's always going to be a level up and up and up, then I think we really should put more respect even on the scrubs that are, you know, that are actual scrubs. Of course we got to hold people accountable. I mean, we don't have to, but we're fans, so we're going to. But I feel Definitely. like the respect for the people who played in these sports needs to be um, raised higher. Yeah, it, needs, it needs to be much higher because these are these are professionals for a reason. There's a difference between recreational and professional, mm-hmm. and I, I think a lot of people do not understand that. But then when they face them in real life, like saying you trash or something like that, then they destroy you. Because I, I look at it from a basketball standpoint, where someone like Danny Green, right? And mm-hmm. in the pros, he's just going to uh, sit in the corner and shoot, play defense. But playing mm-hmm. as people like us, he's going to probably be dribbling. He's going to be hitting some fadeaways. He's going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff that you like, I ain't never seen him do that. Those are pros. He can't do that against them. But against us, of course, he's yeah. going to do that because he because he's taller. He has a better shot. It's going to be higher percentage shots because you're most likely shorter. So they're going to be much better. And I, I think a lot of people don't realize that gap is so much greater than you, what you would really like imagine because we're only seeing it through TV. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they, we're seeing it against practice. other professionals. Exactly. Against other professionals. We're not professionals. So, of course, they're going to dog us probably. I mean, unless you're probably like a high school or college prospect, then maybe you might be up there with them a little more. But then they're going to do some cheap moves, and you're going to be like, dang. <laughs> and you realize the difference in just experience, really. Um and I, I think that that's why a lot of people fail when they get to make it to the next next level because they think they are that, but then they're like, it's not even about uh, talent at that point. It's about skill, mm-hmm. and, and they they just they they think the talent's gonna get them all the way there. That is is not the case. <laughs> it's not it's not the case at all, bro. But like they got that big fish small pond like like syndrome like the feeling because you mm-hmm. gotta think you if you like a four star athlete. And you go to like a school like Brown Deer or like <laughs> Brown you go to Deer. a school like some you just go like you go to like these smaller schools, these D3, D2 schools. And then you're a three, four star athlete and you're just better than everybody. Like you're fat. Like Zach Bond was simply faster than everybody, faster, stronger, better than like almost everybody on the field. Mm-hmm. But then when he got to Madison, he was at equal with everybody and he had to work I'm not saying he didn't in high school but i'm saying like he had to work that much harder exactly. because you had tj watt on the team you had vince beagle you had uh tj edwards you had all these guys on the team and then you saw that hard work pay off because he realized i'm not i'm not at brown deer anymore i'm not sitting back and playing milwaukee guys or just these suburb kids like i'm playing against like ohio state i'm playing against michigan i'm playing against michigan state so when he upped his game, we saw the results. And now he's in the league. Facts. Yeah, I, I will admit, I didn't hear nothing about Zach Bond at first. But then next thing I know, he was being, what, what's it called in college? I don't watch all of it, but he was on the, the list for all pro something. All American. All American. That's what it was. Um, and I'm like, hey, shoot, represent. You know what I'm saying? Represent. Yeah, I went to I went to two battery games before COVID happened, like last year before COVID. Right. Um, and you know, him being Brown Deer alumni, I just, I just looked out for him. Like, of course, what's he going to do? <laughs> but I was really there to see my boy, Jonathan, <laughs> That's you, Jonathan, Taylor. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor, but no, uh, I was, I was sitting there and I was like, like, it's not just like, you see a little flash. Like when you sit down and actually, cause highlights don't do players justice at all. Like. At all. Because they're just going to show, like, big tackles, big hits, mm-hmm. all that. Like, he had a few tackles. He had a pick six. Um, but it's the way that they impact the game different. Uh, QB pressures, QB hurry-ups. Uh, when you when you sit down and watch a player, like, drive their lineman so far back that QB has to, like, scramble, kind of look around mm-hmm. a little more, maybe throw the ball when he doesn't want to, that impacts the game just as much as a sack or just as much as a – a past breakup so like ah uh, that's why i like sitting there actually like watching games and it's uh it's definitely a different feeling like seeing someone you like you used to like go to high school with like on a stage that big that is that is very true like even uh some of my friends our friends who like um with Jalen gentry and the uh, jay gentry seeing like their games and stuff like seeing how they play against other competition and stuff like that uh at different colleges and stuff them slowly you know going through the, their trials and tribulations as they continue to uh get better and stuff like and you know now they're being close being you know towards the top of their squads and stuff like that so it's you know just it is it's very different because we're seeing them cook on our on our team then we get and it's like every time they go somewhere else you kind of gotta like start over and then next thing i know i'm, I'm seeing them continue to develop and not at a face or like being close to 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 the face you know what i'm saying so it's it's definitely something i'm watch and you only can really see the impact if you actually watch the games and that's something that's hard for a lot of people our age to watch games because we're so immersed into house of highlight stuff and espn even started um i was watching through the wire and they were like yeah like everybody's starting to put more highlights on and people think that they're experts because they watch the highlights. The highlights do not tell the whole game. You do not, you will not understand how good Draymond Green is unless you actually watch the game and see Definitely. his impact. And 
yeah, he averaged a triple single or whatever, but his stats have never shown his impact. And that's why he was an all-star averaging like 12, six and six or something like, because, because of what he, what he did defensive player, the, even his blocks and steals didn't even show how much of a defensive player of the year he actually was that year. And it's, um, it's, it's, it's we got to put a lot of respect on these pros because there's a lot of things that go unnoticed unless you watch the actual games. Um, people got to realize that. Yeah. Definitely. But back to like Jalen and Jay, I feel like those two together were the perfect match for each other. Like I know they're brothers, but like, think about it. Jay, Jay Lynn had a, had a scoring, like a scoring, like go-to not saying like, cause he also had Brooklyn, Tejan, Liam, but like, when he he was it made him a better point guard it made him be able to set people up better all that kind of stuff and then jay learned how to not have to like bring the ball up just to like have to facilitate the offense he can have a point guard let him set up and then let him do his thing so i feel like they were both great for each other and they were and like that shows like now true they they killed the narrative like that they need each other like they can't play without each other mm-hmm. they killed the narrative because now they're both having success in what they do in their respective places that's true. That's true. And for all who uh, are wondering, we're talking about Brown Deer high school basketball <laughs> players. Uh, <laughs> uh, really uh, pretty good friends of both of ours, uh, but they're doing really well. Might have Jalen on one of these podcasts eventually that I was talking to the other day, but <clears throat> about to say definitely, man, definitely. It's something to marvel at. It's, it's really it's really great just to see everybody winning, man. That That's that's really the best thing, especially during COVID and all that stuff. Just seeing a lot of people just winning, man. Like that that brings more warmth to my soul than like myself winning. I like just see everybody else winning. And then me knowing that I'm doing what I can as well. Um, you mm-hmm. making your money and stuff like that, slowly building your stuff. And you know, is that that's all we we all just want to see each other win. And that that's what I will admit from the realest people that I've had in my life. Like we all love to see each other win. And i a lot of people don't have friends like that. Uh, that at least that's, that's what I feel like. I feel like a lot of people don't have friends like that. And then friends that are like that, they may have friends, but not friends who are actually like that. And that really destroys self-esteem and just their support system is all types of messed up because Mm -hmm. they don't have that same type of um, encouragement as like, uh, as my best friends that I have, not best friends, but you know, the best of the friends that I have, Um, which is really important. And, um, there is one more thing I did want to uh, talk about. Um, so uh, there is this uh, misconception that uh, from 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 people, it's been died down over the years, I would say. Um, but just anime in general, like a lot of people, uh, you know, <laughs> they they there's some people who still think anime is corny yeah. or you know, or it's just something like that. And then there are also people, which really this bugs me a lot who say they watch anime because it's starting to become more popular, especially because yeah. of, the, um, um, you know, RDC World. RDC World, uh, Lil Uzi Burt, a bunch of Naruto lines. Rappers in general starting to put Naruto lines in there. Clothing that they're wearing now. Mm-hmm. Kakashi on Supreme and stuff, man? Come on now, like this, like this stuff wasn't being made like that, you know, like a few years ago, man. <laughs> Uh, Jamal Williams got the Akatsuki coat. For real? He got oh, the Akatsuki coat. That's I think dope. it's Gucci, I too. I got to You said what? It's Gucci, too. Oh, Gucci. Okay. <laughs> okay, man. And, and mm, mm. for all you people who, who think that anime is, like, um, childish, I just want you to uh, watch Attack on Titan. You will not think it's childish anymore. <laughs> that is... <laughs> your mental sanity if you watch that show it, mm. but, but what i say when i my response to like people who think anime is either childish weird or all that i feel like there's something for everybody exactly. like if you say your favorite type of shows are you just like you like action movies you like that avenger stuff we got action for you good fight scenes over here right. we got we got those good sports shows for you too and then maybe you just want something that's binge worthy we got naruto bleach one piece watch some nostalgia watch some dragon ball z if you if you want even watch dragon just, ball if you're really feeling it 
But no, I just feel like people people go off the misconception because they see like just random stuff on the internet. They see random clips of random animes on the internet and they make their analysis off those because there's there's a ton of shows that like have a bunch of cultural impact, but they'll be like, that's weird, bro. I saw something on the internet like that and that's weird. Like you didn't watch the show. Shut up. Same thing with the basketball highlights. They make they try to make it based off of like something that that's only one snippet of the whole thing. So it's it's the same thing. People just they they want to they want to get everything in one clip and then make a decision off of it. You can't life is more than one clip. Life is a movie. Life is life is literally like a a documentary, but all the pieces in between are actually in it. <laughs> like everything is in there and you can't just you can't just take out the bits and pieces that you like. Like you have to take it all in. But no, I just feel like I just feel like in general, like it's been, and like people like people like just try to ignore facts when it comes to anime too. Because people be like, I don't want to watch that. I don't want to sit there and read re- subtitles. We got English. Not, not I don't want to watch that either. I'm like, just, just shut up. Just get just shut up. Face. Get out of my face. Just leave me alone. <laughs> but no, I just feel like there's there's always going to be an excuse before someone actually sits down and try because they know if they sit down and like it, they're gonna look stupid. Exactly. That's so people like, don't like being wrong. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, bro. I actually got my little brother like for last two, three. He, my little brother is a what is he? Thirteen. Um, is he thirteen? He uh, should be thirteen. <laughs> I think he's thirteen. He's in eighth grade right now, so thirteen. Yeah. Um. So. <laughs> so. Uh. He, for like a last like I want to say a year or two, he was like, "No, I'm not gonna watch." This anime, I'm not gonna watch Naruto. Like he's not gonna watch Naruto, right? Um, he keeps keep telling me that. Mm-hmm. I walked, I literally, I walked downstairs. It was about a month ago. I walked downstairs. I'm looking at him watching Naruto. I'm like, boy, if you... <laughs> and then he's like, bro, this is like, this is like really good. Like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I I tried to tell you, but you didn't want to listen to me. And now he bought at least three to four things kakashi related like just uh mm-hmm. like i bought him i bought him a shirt he bought him an airpod case with kakashi on it he bought an iphone case with kakashi on it with supreme and stuff on him he and he's still trying to buy even more. he's trying to buy like a little anime little lamp light and stuff like that i'm just like once you actually watch it and stuff you're not gonna like you're you're gonna want to see more and stuff like that because that that's just how good it is like it's 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 not like a regular cartoon because it has life lessons and stuff like that as well in it and it's relatable to a t of course because they're character they're freaking anime characters and stuff not <laughs> real but it's there is it's a lot more to it than you would actually think and you could only get it if you actually watch it <laughs> so just, i feel like everybody should just like find like find one of the big popular animes and just sit down and watch it because i feel like that's going to be your gateway like you sit down to watch naruto you sit down to watch one piece you sit down to watch uh for people who are like story driven people i always go full metal alchemist brotherhood that's always my go-to one i appreciate you for the uh uh shout out to watch that uh he he's the one this cameron told me to actually to watch them um and i did not regret that at all what's the feisty is a little better but overall i i loved it um storytelling wise i I love stories myself another reason why i love anime because a story if you just fight then you can get out my face at at this point i'm 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 grown to the quote unquote grown to the point where like i like i like actually the stories and just everything that comes into it uh because i'm a writer myself i love substance so that that really uh gets me so if if you actually had just five anime that you would give to just anybody just to watch to get started whether old new or mid or whatever just like what what would your what would your five be um it usually differs between like men and women but if i just had to pick five i'm definitely gonna put naruto on that list it's i'm gonna put like naruto on the list just because like i feel like anybody can get anything from that Mm -hmm. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist can show you how good of storytelling and character development. Uh, yeah, Brotherhood. Yeah, can show you that, like how good anime can be. 
Um, if you're looking for a, a more fight one, I could definitely I give you Dragon Ball Z because it's iconic. It's definitely gonna give you what you want. Uh, it's, it's, you can get past the screaming. Um, if you're new age, if you're into animation, uh, in new age, I definitely recommend Fire Force. Uh, that's one of the best animated animes I've seen in a very long time. And Attack on Titan, it's as bloody gory as it is. It's one of the best stories I've ever read. Uh, fight scenes are eh, but they but they make up for it with world building and plot twists. Facts, facts. Uh, yeah, facts. I think that was that four. Or that's five. That was five, right? I think. It was I think five. that was five. So it, it was five. Brotherhood, Dragon Ball, Full Metal, Attack on Titan. And Fire Force, yeah, that's fine. All right, well, so if I had a five, I would definitely, I'll say five besides the ones that you did. Um, <laughs> this is a long shot uh, because it is so freaking long, but mm-hmm. One Piece, um, you could probably literally be watching that for two years if you wanted to separate it until you, and you still probably wouldn't have even caught up. <laughs> But it is it is a staple in the community for a for the, in the anime community for a reason. Not that I'm technically not a part of it. I like to just watch it in my own, I like to watch anime in my own time and stuff. But uh, I would say watch that. I would say watch Soul Eater. Um, <laughs> I would say yes. Watch, you know how much I love Soul Eater. <laughs> uh, Gurren Lagann. Uh, because those are just just. Uh, those two are like one season so like it's really easy one two seasons it's really easy to get through it's less than 60 episodes something like that and really easy um a romance anime uh i would just for for people who do like that type of stuff uh, there's a few you can actually choose from i've been watching a few myself recently but um i would maybe uh nisekoi probably that's that's one of the best uh Nisekoi, that's N-I-S-E-K-O-I, but for anyone wondering. And then fifth, I would probably say, um, oh, My Hero Academia. Here we go. I was, <laughs> I, I couldn't think of that. I couldn't think of that one. Like, uh, that's for like, like I have a friend. She's about to be 21. She just started. She loves it. And then my niece, who's like 10, also loves it. So I feel like that's definitely an age, one that ages well between anime fans in general. I, I will admit that. One Punch Man is another one. That's that's an acquired taste for some people though, um, because it is just different. <laughs> it's very different from your typical uh, protagonist stuff. I will admit that. Um, but yeah, that's about uh, that. Those are like some good starters for people, and then you know maybe hopefully you can get your friends onto it, and you know keep spreading that love that is anime. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, I think that's about it. That's all I have. You got anything else, man? I'm cool, man. I'm cool. All right. So I want to thanks ev- thank you everybody for uh tuning into this episode. Might be a little longer than usual, but I mean, shoot, we're just talking, just yapping. <laughs> just yapping, man. So uh you want to plug your social media and stuff, man? Uh I'm actually social media clearance for oh, 2021. Yeah. We don't want that bad energy. No bad. But I will leave y'all with this. Be yourself, find a passion, and just do what you do. Just it's do. 2021. Make it a good year. Yeah, make it a good year. Trust me. Um, it might have started off a little shaky, but you know, we can move forward. <laughs> we can move forward. Um, so uh, and then my last word would be uh be yourself. That's all I could really say. Be yourself. Um, and find out what being yourself actually means on a day-to-day basis. And from there, you will start to figure out your life so thank you again for tuning in the episode i'm your host jewels and this is what this is kimmy p man oh my gosh all right all right thanks everybody and see y'all next time peace out